Um, but but here's the funny thing, right? So on my Instagram account at I am Rob Jefferson, um, I do live streams every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I'll grab fans and I'll bring them in. And like I know nothing about this. Freak. You know nothing about yeah. <laughs> of course you don't. Of course you didn't invite me on your podcast when I featured you in a live stream. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Story Mode, the sometimes monthly, sometimes quarterly, sometimes weekly interview podcast series here at Nilfinity Gaming. Today, I'm joined by legend of the comic book YouTube scene, Robert Jefferson. <laughs> What's up, man? What's up? How you doing? I'm not doing too bad, man. I am doing very, very good right now. Yeah, that's good to hear. How's things up there in the great white north? Dude, it sucks, man. Like, like here's okay. Here's the thing about Colorado, right? Like, I live at the base of the Rocky Mountains, so so usually the way it plays out is any kind of weather we get comes over the Rocky Mountains and it passes over Fort Collins and then it settles on Denver. But sometimes, sometimes <laughs> we don't get that. Instead, what we get is this weather blowing over the Rocky Mountains and then spreading all its misery all over the Fort Collins area as it makes its way to settle on Denver. And that's basically what happened here, right? I think we were the first place in the country to get snow. And so it was just straight blizzard here for like two days. And and the sun's out now, so it's all starting to melt. But uh, yeah, it was rough. Like yesterday was bad, bad. It sucked. I had the four-wheel drive truck and uh, my fiance, uh, she went out to her, her volunteer gig. And I was like, take the truck, please, for the love of God. Like make me feel happy and take the truck because <laughs> I don't want you driving in your regular car out there and all that nonsense. So she took the took the f-150 out but uh yeah man it's 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 nice here though like it's it's cool you know it's, it's pretty chill it's cold here too <laughs> so remind me where are you at i'm in nebraska we got snow okay. yesterday i was driving yesterday and yeah in the snow that was yeah 18 wheeler in the snow is not fun yeah i don't envy <laughs> you man like like i couldn't do nebraska man you guys have like the corn huskers and nothing else. Like it's it's rough, man. <laughs> hey, we got Chimney Rock. Don't you uh, be throwing okay. shade on Chimney Rock. Okay. <laughs> well, Rob, this podcast, as I told you before, when we were shooting the old bird, there is basically an interview. We talk, and we usually start with fellow YouTubers. I use quotation yeah. marks there. Yeah, that's with all good, man. Origins and. So what, at what point, you know, was it like, I'm going to do YouTube? Uh, Here's the thing, man. Like I had, I wanted to be a YouTuber for a long time, but, but the, the struggle with YouTube is I had no idea how to make it work. Right. A lot of, one of the things a lot of people don't know is I had a call of duty channel probably back in 2010. Um, and I think at most it got like 200 subscribers, right? And it was just people who kind of wandered through and happened to come across my content, but it wasn't really growing and nothing was really happening with it. At the time, I didn't understand the nature of YouTube. Mm-hmm. And my thought was that if you were a successful YouTuber, meant your content essentially blew up overnight. And so I didn't really know enough to know that when you, when you start creating content on YouTube, that it could be that you're creating content for like five years and nothing ever really comes of it. And then just boom, some video catches up or catches on and it explodes and your, your subscriber base explodes and then you're off to the races and you're like a massive YouTuber. And so, so because of that, I kind of scratched it and called it a day. You know, I, I walked away from it, but, uh, but no, I mean, I, there, there were a lot of other content creators around at the time that I took a lot of inspiration from, but at the time I was working a job that just wasn't really fulfilling. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't really enjoy it too much. Mm-hmm. And, and it just, it, it really asked a lot more from me than I was, than I really felt comfortable giving anymore. And so I kind of got to my wits end and I was like, you know what, like, I'm just going to take the chance on starting a YouTube channel. And, and initially, here's the funny thing is initially Comics Explained was going to be a music production channel that I was going to launch with a buddy of mine, Chris. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people don't know that. And uh, you're, you're, you're actually the only, the first person to ever find out about it. So congratulations, man. <laughs> the put that on my checklist. <laughs> yeah, put that on your checklist. But, um, but no, it, it was going to start out as, as a, as a music production channel and then that kind of fell through so i was like all right whatever i'll talk about comic books because i love comics people always said i would make a good teacher so let's combine the two together and go from there and so so the first video i made was a video on on jason wingard right and it's just and you can you can still see it on my channel right it's just this still image of jason wingard with like black bars on the side of the video it looks like something straight out of like 2000 and 2006 right like when youtube first popped up and so it's 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 like a super basic video, and it's it's really really boring and really mundane. And I'm talking about Jason Wingard for like 12 minutes, 
And so I'm like, okay, well, that was fun. And so then I, I, you know, I end it and I put that video on YouTube and then I go on to the next video and the next video. And so I get about three or four videos into it. And then I'm talking to a buddy of mine, Sean, at work. And I'm like, Sean, man, like, what do you think would make these videos pop? He's like, dude, if I were you, man, I would add comic book panels in there, like add dynamic panels that move so people can see what you're referencing. And I was like, that's a genius idea. And so I did that, and that, ex that, that that's what really blew up my YouTube channel was because it was one thing to say, like, hey, guys, here's this guy, Jason Wingard, and he can control the five senses. And he, at one point, took over Jean Grey and tricked her into believing that she was in a Victorian era, on a Victorian-era ship. And then she got the wiser of it and realized what was going on and then gave him cosmic awareness, and he went into a comatose state. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace. Like, there's, 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 there's an in-between doing that and then just kind of, kind of doing a more – uh dynamic and nuanced explanation that basically says like here's everything you need to know to become an expert on a character and so so adding comic book panels to it and then going far more in depth in my videos and creating like these 25 minute long comprehensive explanations that would start with the origins and then would go into their publication history and then would finish with how we can expect to see them in you know in the future of, of marvel or dc in terms of their movies or tv show universe or whatever proved to be resoundingly popular and so around that same time, um, I was I was I was on Twitter and I hit up another YouTuber who had nothing to do with comic books, right? He was a big YouTuber I followed for a long time. And I hit him up and I said, Hey man, um, like I want to grow on YouTube, like how do I how do I grow? And he said, Well, network and make friends. And I was like, Okay. Now in hindsight, it's a canned answer, right? It's just, you know, it's the YouTube answer of just keep grinding away, guys, you got it, you know, and it's like, okay, whatever. You know, but he said network and make friends. And I said, Okay, cool. So I started doing that. So I started reaching out to other comic book YouTubers and I hit up pretty much all of them. Right? Because at the time when I first started, the big three were Eris of Variant Comics, Comic Book Girl 19, and Comic Book Cast. And it was like, okay, so I, I hit all of them up, swinging for the fences, knowing they probably weren't going to return any responses, and they didn't. You know, and, and there was actually, like, one of them, I won't say which one, but one of them said, like, I don't really work with YouTubers who don't have much of a future in the YouTube industry. And I was like, okay, oh, whatever. Oh, snarky. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay. You know, I called it a day. Come to find out, my channel's actually three times their size now. So... Yeah, I guess there was a future I, in this I, industry. I, so. I think I have yeah. an idea who that is. And I yeah, so I, I got like, a yeah. I got a story like, about them too. Yeah, and I was like, well, I was like, there's a there is a future, I guess. And and it kind of dwarfs yours. So whatever, man. But uh but I was like, all right. So um so after that, um, like during that time when I was reaching out to people, I found Benny over at Comic Story. And his channel was a little bit smaller than mine, uh, but we were pretty much around the same size, right? Because mm -hmm. he was doing dramatic readings and I was doing, you know, character explanations. So I reached out to him, sent him a message on YouTube, said, hey, man, do you want to collaborate? Do you want to make a podcast? And he said, yes. So he and I launched the weekly pool. And by that point, the channel's exploding, right? The channel's like growing really, 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 really fast. And so I would say over the course of about about a year, my channel blew up to 150,000 subscribers roughly. And, and, and it, and it was like, okay, it was like a self-sustaining source of income. So I went to my job and I was like, peace. Like I bailed out <laughs> and I gave him a month and a half notice, right? Cause you should always give pretty good notice whenever you're going to leave a job. So I let him know a month and a half ahead of time. Like, Hey, like December, it was December 31st, 2000 and 2014, I think when I was like, this is going to be my last day on the job. And I, and I left, you know, and I haven't, I haven't really looked back. I mean, there are times when I do miss that job, but it's really more that I miss the people more so than I miss the job. I mean, when things get really stressful with YouTube and everything, then yes, you know, I, I miss, you know, I miss the, I miss the job, the simplicity of it all. Um, but that's basically the origin of Comics Explained, man, is, is I was at a job I didn't like and I wanted to become a YouTuber. So I tried my hardest and it all blew up and then I did. And that's, that's the kicker behind it. But, you know, and now and, here and, we I don't, are. I don't, and now, now here we are. Exactly. You know, that's, that's, that's the thing behind it. You know, for all the people out there who are looking to become YouTubers, all the people out there who want to become YouTube content creators, here's the important thing to understand. Don't focus so much on like the viral video, right? Like everybody who wants to become a YouTuber seems to kind of emphasize this notion of like the pop-off video, right? The video they make that goes viral. The problem with the, the problem with doing that is videos go viral because there's authenticity to it. There's something about it that's kind of authentic that, that people mm -hmm. really find interesting and attractive, right? Whether it's, you know, a guy realizing that his girlfriend or fiance is pregnant or, um, you know, the fact that like, like people are getting married. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the fact that people are getting married, whatever the case is, there, there's a kind of hu human element authenticity to it that people love. You can't fake that. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, don't don't try to focus too much on the viral video. Just find something that you enjoy and just make a ton of videos about it. And if there is an audience out there for what you enjoy, you will find that audience. Now, when the time comes when you have to ask the question, do I want this to be a business or do I want it to be a, a continued hobby? Well, then you got to make that choice you know, accordingly. But in the beginning, don't focus so much on trying to become the next 
great big huge YouTuber, right? If you're if you're if you're trying to become a comic book YouTuber, don't try to become the next Comics Explained, right? Don't try to become the next Comic Historian. You know, don't copy our formats. Don't you know? Don't copy Benny's format. Don't copy my format. You know, don't don't try to become us, right? Like try to be yourself. You know, try to try to take your personality, put it in your videos, and build your audience that way. So. Well, I'm gonna go all white collar and uppity with you and say two woods diver oh, two roads diverge in a yellow woods. Gosh, John, it now I'm already failing this line. <laughs> it's you get what I mean. Take the road, road less traveled by. Yeah, yeah. Take the road okay. less traveled. Yeah. I am gonna try this. Uh, we have to stop here real quick because OBS did decide to throw a little bit of fit, and I yeah, want to no, check. Good, I want to make sure. And like that's an this is an easy edit, but if not, the viewers at home are seeing a technical issue develop in real time. Yeah, in real time. Like here's a, here's a question, man. Like how do you how do you get through this? Like you're not yeah. gonna choke. <laughs> 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 oh, you're good, man. You're good. Rob, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, no pressure, man. <clears throat> and but we're yeah, back be after and a. We're back. Yeah, and we're back after a technical issue that wasn't really a technical <laughs> yeah. issue. <laughs> yep, it was a simple little thing, but uh, but yeah, no. So so um, like what we were, were you talking, talking about, about before? Well, let's go back. Let's start with the copy where we were at. Uh, you we ended with the origin of comics explained. We took a break yeah, yeah. because I you know about entitled YouTubers, and we're not calling people yeah. out, right? Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, it's it's. I mean, there's there's more important things to do in this world besides names, but like we're not a drama factory. But um, or at least this, this podcast is not a drama factory. But the the funny thing about this is is like there are you not yet. But there. welcome to talking shit with Joe. Yeah, <laughs> changes <laughs> all y'all, instantly. Y'all won't believe what Joe heard. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but no, so 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 it's it's amazing how carried away YouTubers get. And admittedly, when I when my channel first started blowing up, like I did get arrogant about it, right? Because mm -hmm. I never experienced that kind of success before. But as you sort of grow into it and as you start to grow up, you start to realize, hey, so like basically I make videos on YouTube about comic books. So <laughs> like that's by no means a reason to get carried away and be arrogant about myself, right? And so so ultimately I calmed down, you know, and, and I, I and I just I just chilled, you know, and I became the, the really chill laid back guy that I am now. Um, but but here's a funny thing, right? So on my Instagram account at I am Rob Jefferson, um, I do live streams every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I'll grab fans and I'll bring them in. And like I know nothing about this. Freak. You know nothing about yeah. <laughs> of course you don't. Of course you didn't invite me on your podcast when I featured you in a live stream. <laughs> but um, but no. So so like I bring fans, in, and and what amazes me is fans will like lose it, right? They'll they'll mm -hmm. they'll they'll go they'll go nuts. Like and you've seen it, man. Like you've seen it where there's been fans who just freeze up. Mm -hmm. and like just don't know what to do and they're just kind of sitting there like just kind of sputtering and and they have no clue what to say and it's like dude the whole like this is your one shot man don't don't blow it <laughs> the spotlight is on you no pressure spotlight no pressure exactly. exactly you got like you got you know what is it 80 90 100 people on instagram watching you right now like don't panic everything's gonna be cool but um other people are just like right off the bat like oh dude i'm a huge fan of your videos and i have these questions and so on but but it's but for me Interacting directly with fans is one of the coolest and most humbling experiences, right? Because what I love is the idea of being able to put faces to names, right? Mm -hmm. Because like when I'm looking through comments on YouTube and when I'm looking through comments on Instagram and things like that, like all I see are names, right? Like Thanos is big dick, you know, 23 or something like that. And it's like, okay, so like, I mean, that's a name, but like, I don't know what that person looks like. Like, I don't know if they're like a 12 year old who thought the name would be hilarious or if they're like some weird 35 year old pervert. Like I have no, <laughs> no clue what kind of person that is. But like when you can put a name or you can put a face to that name and like you look, you're, you're talking to a fan who's been watching your content almost since you first started uh and they're just like overjoyed because they get to like talk to you directly which is something that, mm -hmm. that only ever really happened before if they happen to run into me in a comic book convention or happen to see me in public just luck of the draw um it's it's a cool it's a really rewarding experience it's a really cool experience you know to be able to interact with those fans in in such a way as to to impact their lives in such a positive way um, and so I never understood why YouTubers, why some YouTubers would get so carried away by their success and, and come to this belief that they're somehow like the end all be all, you know, of, of whatever it is, because honestly, like all YouTube really is, is a, is a great big, huge, like, you know, center. It's a great big, huge hub for all of us who are part of the YouTube community, whether you're just starting out or whether you've been around for a decade and you got 20 million subscribers, whatever the case is, it's for all of us who are basically part of it to showcase our our skill, you know, whether it's the, the, the gift of gab or it is photography or cinematography or tech phones, computer building, whatever the case is. It's a way for us to, to showcase our talent 
to build an audience of, of like-minded fans and then to to essentially interact with those fans, right? And, and to enjoy what it is that we do along with our fans. At no point in that does does that does that whole process involve being a dick, right? Like like that it doesn't that doesn't need to be part of the equation. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to be an arrogant asshole because you're successful on YouTube, you know. Because the reality is that YouTube channel it can it can be huge today and dead tomorrow, right? And and that's yeah. you know it's that, that's that's kind of the nature of it, right? So well, I mean, look at what happened with Pro Jared. You, okay, I never, I never, I don't know who Pro Jared is. I've heard okay. of, I think I've heard of him, but I never really. Pro he was Jared. a guy. He was part of the normal boot crew, you know, like uh, completionist, uh, peanut butter gamer, stuff like that. Yeah. I'm, I, and obviously, I, I love gaming history. Like, if if anyone even says like a dime of of information about gaming history, I'm all over it. Yeah, <laughs> but like, I mean, was, uh, he, was he one of those guys who was like, uh, he was platinum? No, was that's the completionist. That yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Okay. But he had like a million subscribers, and then it turns out wow. he was a dick. And then within like, oh, what was it? Like I'm not, and you know, like I okay in this podcast, we I don't really try to call people out. But listen, if if you're doing what Pro Jared was doing, mm, it's kind of like definitive at this point, yeah. you know. But like in, in YouTube, what I find fascinating about it, and this coming from a guy like I said that was that, that started off as, as wanting to be a writer or someone that just you know I'm gonna be behind my keyboard and that's it. I love that you can meet people that are passionate about topics that, the same way you are, you know, like, yeah. I, like Rob, this is the first time we've sat down and actually had conversation, like besides with the Instagram live stream. But I feel like we could sit down and have our, an hour conversation about YouTube or like when, or uncharted, like we talked about w during the technical era or, or Superman or like, Maybe even we can go into the intricacies of shot uh, composition or stuff like that. Stuff that I don't know a lot about, but I would love to talk about because I'm just, yeah. I'm, I, I think a lot, I think really YouTube is where the nerds went off to like rule because like, oh, you yeah. know. Oh, YouTube is nerd land. Oh, dude, here's the thing, man. This is why YouTube is so awesome. You know, I, I don't mean to cut <laughs> you, but like, like, this is why YouTube is so awesome, right? Because like there was a time when it was like a dirty little secret to be a comic book fan. Right, like mm -hmm. you can be a comic book fan, but like keep that shit to yourself. Like that was that was the general, that was the, the law of the land. Right, got my ass beat a few <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah, I'm 35 years old. So when I was in high school, if you told people you were a comic book fan, like you were like a pariah. Right, it was just like, oh my god, like guys would give you shit, and girls are just like, ew, icky. Like it was, it was the, it was the craziest thing ever. But now, now, and then this is this is why this is why the dynamic of geek culture shifting is so cool is because now not only is it cool to be a comic book fan, nobody wants to be left out, right? So like, mm -hmm. you know, Iron, what is it, Infinity War, I'm sorry, Avengers Infinity War, and then like Avengers uh, Avengers Endgame drops, and people are just like, Rob, t teach me everything I need to know about being a comic book fan, you know? And it's like, of course I will. Like, yes, I will teach you um, everything you need to know to understand these movies. And it's cool to be in that position, right? But more mm -hmm. so than that, it's cool to know, and, and it's cool to have all these young people and, and older people out there who previously kind of felt like some measure of shame about being a comic book fan, getting out there and like strutting their shit and just being like, mm -hmm. yeah, man, I know everything about the X. <laughs> it's cool to be able to see fans who can do that. I'll so. tell you this joke. I was in high school, ninth grade. Yeah. And I, you know, uh, you know, the lead that comes in your pencils, you know, like yes. the mechanical pencils. I was holding yeah. that up and I was like, and we were in science class, and I was just a curious, dumb kid. And, like, this is the so amount of social tact I had, okay? I held it up. I was looking through it. I go, I can see through it. And this kid that was a friend of mine turned out, you know, didn't work out or whatever. He comes up. He says, you're not Superman, Joe. And I looked at him with the straightest face, and I said, Superman can't see through lead, Mitch. That's the most comic book nerd thing I've ever heard a person say. But I've I've said stuff like that, man. And see, that's that's the thing. I mean, I mean, here's the thing. <clears throat> As a comic book YouTuber, like I do, I do come across those fans periodically. They just haven't really developed social skills, mm -hmm. and and some of it's because, like, and usually it's because they're younger, right? Like they're they're 15, 16, 17 year old fans, and like comic books are their whole world, right? Like they don't they don't like people. They like comic books, <laughs> and that's fine. I mean, I think developing social skills is kind of a necessity to be able to make it in the world. Um, but the cool thing is that if, if, if they don't really have their social, their social skills where they want them to be, and they do feel that feeling of isolation, mm -hmm. then like YouTube is the retreat, right? Like, yeah. like comic books are the retreat. They can go into like online communities and talk to people about like Superman and Batman and all these different things. And they don't really feel so isolated anymore because now they're in their, they're in their, 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 their like 
meat and potatoes prime, right? Like they're they're in the one thing that they're exceedingly good at, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a there's a great feeling that comes with being able to sit down and say like I am incredibly good at a thing and, and like what whatever that thing happens to be, you know. But to say like I'm exceedingly good at it. But uh, but yeah, it's it's a great time to be a comic book fan, to be like a nerd in general. Oh, right? it's culture so guy. awesome! So, look look yeah. at how much cool stuff we're getting. Like HBO yeah. just announced a Green Lantern series. Dude, oh, dude, okay. No okay, one's uh, – listen, 90% of you out there are like, who the hell is Green Lantern? And those uh, of us that know are like, check this out. Yeah, like – like I mean, people – I think people know of the Green Lantern, but like the Red Lanterns and oh. like the Indigo Tribe and like the 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 like Larflees. You walk up to the average person and you show a picture of Larflees and say, who is this? They're going to be like, hell if I know, like – some monster from Sesame Street? I have no idea. They're not gonna know who. who it's is. it's Ernie on a bad day. Yeah, but you're basically like this is the only Orange Lantern, and this guy is almost god tier powerful because he channels the entire greed emotional spectrum into himself. It's ridiculous how powerful oh. he is. Yeah, but it's like, so it's, cool. It's nuts. Yeah, it's, it's he's so, so op. Okay, I gotta ask you this: Who's your favorite Green Lantern? Uh, I see. I don't really like the Green Lanterns. To, oh, to come be honest, on. I mean, if, if I have to pick one, I'd probably. But I like the Red Lanterns more than I like the Green Lanterns. Who'd you pick? Because he cut out there. It's like the. Perfect... Oh, I said, I said if I had to pick one, I would say John Stewart. But I oh, prefer come the Red on. Lanterns. I prefer the Red Lanterns over any of the other Lantern Corps. The only one that comes really? close is the Sinestro Corps. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I prefer the Red Lanterns. Okay. They're amazing. Yeah. Red Lanterns are piss like all the time. Like it's it's amazing. <laughs> Basically the. Uh... The epitome yeah. of your teenage years is the red. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to make everybody out there angry, but it's like the red lanterns just constantly angry all the time. <laughs> oh, I'm so. If they get, if they do make that Green Lantern series, I want them to be like, hey, here's like maybe that, but they'll probably go with Kyle, or maybe they'll do like an amalgamation of Kyle and Hal and uh, John, <coughs> you know, and they'll like just, Hal. you think yeah. they'll do Hal. Joy. He's, I mean, it's like it's like doing a Flash TV. Show starting off with Wally West it doesn't really make any sense like you start off with Barry Allen right like I mean I guess you could go with Jay Garrick but he doesn't really count he was a test subject to mm -hmm. see if the flash could work but Barry Allen was was like was is was and still is kind of considered to be the flash right the most popular version of the flash depending on what group you're talking to but yeah, yeah I'd say they're probably going to start with Hal Jordan but I want to see that right I want them to work up to the Sinestro Corps war and then see how that will like sprinkle out into like the Red Lanterns, the Blue Lanterns, the Indigo Tribe. It, oh my God! Yeah, I would, I would love that so much. If it's like, if it's like over the course of the show, right? Like, imagine, imagine this, right? Ten like, imagine seasons, this. ten seasons, <clears throat> ten se Oh, dude, ten seasons of this shit. Over the, oh, imagine for the season and a half, the first two seasons, that it's mm -hmm. like the Green Lanterns don't kill, right? Like, like it's the oh. one thing that we don't do, and like you lock it down, and it's like a solidified thing. It's like we're like Batman. It's the no kill rule, all that kind of stuff. And then Sinestro Corps war breaks out. And it's like the Sinestro Corps is just killing Green Lanterns all over the place. And, and like you get this, you get this cliffhanger at the end of season two. Like, like, oh my god, like, like, how do we possibly win? And then the order comes down from the top. Lethal force is now authorized in season. Oh. And it's just like, holy shit! <laughs> it, it would be amaze balls. <laughs> oh, it'd be so like this is the best. Yeah. And like, maybe we can transition here, because like I hold this kind of like unpopular opinion but if dc got serious i was like yeah. we're going to make our shit rock they would trounce marvel dude that's the irony of it all man like people look at the oh you're cutting out oh i said people look at the at the marvel cinematic universe and they have some mind-blowingly fantastic films mm -hmm. right like like you look at the mcu and you say okay the mcu movies are 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 just epic in scale and fantastic the way they're done in terms of the actors and the stories and, and the cinema the cinematography kind of everything yeah the, the cinematography awesome. and everything it's absolutely amazing but but <laughs> if if Dis or i'm sorry not disney if dc and warner brothers got it together and said okay so like we're tired of screwing around we're gonna make some hardcore stuff Oh, dude, they would, dude, not even in hell would you see a massacre like what you would see oh. at the movie theaters when it came to DC versus Marvel. Because you're, you're, I mean, like off the top of my head, right? Like mm -hmm. <clears throat> you're talking about Kingdom Come, all right? You're talking mm -hmm. about the killing joke. 
you're talking about Batman, uh, like any like Batman, Night of the Owls, Court of the Owls, Death of the Family, Endgame, Death in the Family from Batman, Nightfall, which was basically the Dark Knight Returns. Uh, you're talking about like like anything that Steve Englehart wrote from the Joker, which is essentially the version of the Joker that you saw from Batman the animated series. Um, and that's just that's just that, right? Like then you have stories like Wonder Woman Hikatea, where she beats mm-hmm. the piss out of Batman. You've got Wonder Woman League of One, where she like dismantles the Justice League by herself. Like yeah. you've got you got Greg Rucka's entire Wonder Woman rebirth run, right? So like the truth and or Wonder Woman Truth, Wonder Woman Lies, and all that. You got all. I haven't read that on. yet, but I want to. Oh, it's on dude, DC. It's me... on the DC Universe app. Like I, I, I stopped trades because of the app. I'm like I'm paying six bucks and I get all this. <laughs> yeah. Might as well keep it going. Oh, here's the yeah. thing, man. Like Greg Rucka, and like I said, like like League of One, I think was written by Greg Rucka. Hikatea was written written by Greg Rucka, and then um, Rebirth was written by by Greg Rucka. Dude, his handling of Wonder Woman is amazing, and it's one of the most like un- he's like he's like the unsung hero of of Wonder Woman in so many ways. But like it's 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 amazing how how his writing is when it comes to her character. But that, that's just them. Then you start mm-hmm. getting into Superman stories, right? Like Superman for oh. all seasons. Like, like whatever happened to the Man of Tomorrow, the death of Superman, I wouldn't do the aftermath because that sucked. Do you uh, remember – oh, sorry. I don't mean to cut no, you no, off so much. No, no. Go ahead, man. But remember your uh, your your video when you were like phase one of DC's uh, cinematic universe or whatever after – it was like a couple years ago. Yeah. After that, I sat down and I started writing my own Superman origin story for like the, what would be like a cool movie one. Yeah. And man, I and my brother sat down and I told him, I go – there's so much potential in Superman. Like, oh, yeah. Here you have – you have – okay, yeah, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman are more recognizable in parts of the world than the Christian cross. Superman is, yeah. And you guys still somehow managed to not get a billion dollars? Yeah. We well, see, here's the thing. The way it was written, the way the man is written – it was it was done terribly because oh, nobody so wants to see a Superman who's unsure of, right? Like mm-hmm. people want to people want to see Superman as like the guy who's just got it all figured out, right? Like like he arrives on the scene, he's like, I'm Superman and I've got my shit sorted. Like that's that's the Superman people want to see, right? Like like I've got the I've got it all sorted. Like your granddad's Superman, right? Like the guy who knows what to do, right? At the end of the day, when everybody's unsure what to do, like everybody looks at Superman because he's got it figured out. That's the one that people want. They don't want the one where he's yeah. like. I'm, I'm not really sure if I want to save humanity and I'm not really sure if I want to be a good guy. And I'm so uncertain of myself. Like nobody wants to see a Superman who lacks confidence. Right. Mm-hmm. And if, and, and even if you give us that in the beginning, which is fine, right. Mm-hmm. It's fine to give us that version of Superman. Um, when you, when you have him like, you know, leaving Smallville and getting to Metropolis. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and it was cool to see Jonathan Kent giving his son like morally questionable advice. Like like the world like the world won't understand you if you if you step out there and show them who you are. So like maybe you should have let that that bus full of kids drown. Right. Like maybe you should have just let that happen. Right. It's yeah, not your that, job that's a good them. part. It's a it's a very good part. Like it's it's an amazing part. Having Jonathan Kent sit down and, and tell his son, like, you're gonna have to decide whether or not you want the world to know that you exist. And if you don't want them to know you exist, then Bad things are going to happen, and the things that you could have stopped, but you're not going to be able to. Um, like it, it, it was cool to see that, but like by the time you got three quarters of the way into the movie, Superman should have been the guy who's just like, I know what I'm about. I'm a mm-hmm. good guy. I saved the day. I'm a superhero. That's not in question. Let's let's tear this up, right? Let's 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 do this, you know. And that that was the issue that you ran into, you know, is, is it didn't feel like that, you know, it didn't feel like the Superman who's got it all sorted out, you know. Now Batman by Ben Affleck. Here's my question: How do you feel about Batman by Ben Affleck? I think he, I think it was the script. I don't think it was his fault. I think he could. I think Bat Bat Ben at Bat, Bat Flick could have been an amazing thing. Yeah, but it's just the like the script. Like, let's be honest, the script for Justice League was atrocious. The yeah, it was script bad. for Batman v Superman, while the extended version of Batman v Superman is marginally better, it still doesn't make sense. Like, Batman has to represent humanity. He has to be like, listen. I want you I want to make this better. So I'm not going to kill you cuz at the end of the day I believe in humanity to the point that maybe if I I mean you can argue the final points of if I beat you up enough maybe you're stop your stuff but <laughs> but yeah. you know like he's he's not a killer and this idea that he was branding them he's like oh I'm just killing them with an extra step. And I'm like no. No. Yeah. Well, it was just a bunch of things that didn't make sense, right? These weird ass dreams but it's like it's like Wonder like it was cool to see Wonder Woman show up. But it's like why is she mm-hmm. even like why why is she here? Like it's cool to see and like the you know the music sounds awesome. You know like 
you know, mm. XL Junkie, like, that's really cool stuff. But, like, in terms of plot and just storytelling and pacing, like, what in the hell is even going on right now? And then oh. it's like, you know, it's like, well, both our names are Martha, so that means we're best friends now. And it's like, okay, like, look, Zack Snyder, just stop <laughs> making, writing anything to do with DC characters. Because one of the things that Snyder did is he came out and said, Injustice was his influence in writing Justice League. And it's like, but like you screwed up though. Like that never should have been your influence in writing the Justice League. No. Right? Like the Justice League should have been your influence in writing the Justice League <laughs> because it's what it's based on. So yeah. it's like it's like, okay, you know, like like I get where he's coming from to a degree, but no, I mean here's that's 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 the thing, man, because DC has the original heroes. Say what mm -hmm. you want to about what Warner Brothers has done with the movie so far. They have the original original superheroes. If any comic book company should be dominating the comic book landscape right now in terms of of um, movies and TV shows and so on, it should be DC, right? Every superhero that exists out there is based off of Superman. Every antihero yeah. is based off of Batman. Every woman who is a superhero is based off Wonder Woman. Every spacefaring character is based off of Green Lantern. And it just goes on. Everybody who can run really fast, every speedster out there is based off the Flash. Like you can, it just it's, it goes over and over and over and over again. Sure, they might twist them out, they might make changes, so on and so forth, but they're all basically based on the same character. Martian Manhunter, the exact same way. Martian Manhunter was based on Superman, but the reason why you got mm -hmm. Martian Manhunter is because DC didn't want to overexpose the fan base to Superman. They're like, you get Action Comics, and you get his, his self-titled self series, and if we start putting him on Justice League and all these other teams, then it's going to start screwing things up. To say nothing of the fact that then you had World's Finest, which was a crossover between Batman and Superman. So he was already appearing in three different books, and then they added two more on top of that with Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane, and Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. So he was appearing in five comic books. So they were like, we don't want to oversaturate the market with Superman related content because it'll take away from the significance of Superman showing up. So what can we do instead? And somebody's like, I don't know, man, just make some guy who's just like Superman. Except he can shapeshift and he's got telepathy and he's afraid of fire. And then we got Martian Manhunter. And it's like, okay, cool. So that works. So 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 like all these characters are based off off like the original lineup of what was basically the Justice League yeah. as we got it back in 1960, back in the old Brave and the Bold comics. And so it's like it's like if like DC should be dominating the the movie landscape at the moment and it's, it kind of sucks that they're not um it it, it kind of blows that like they're screwing the pooch so bad and i don't oh. really know why. endgame made me cry i was mm -hmm. like oh, this is so good oh. what if what if we had a justice league movie like this imagine yeah. 10 years 15 years uh, building up to this with the justice league yeah kingdom oh. come you just do oh. kingdom come as like one big face like that's the thing like imagine if marvel civil was like a whole phase Right, it was a whole like five year epic or like ten year epic that basically concluded with like the final battle of Civil War, and like and and like it did in the comics, you basically got like two hundred superheroes fighting two hundred superheroes, you know, and, and and that was a great thing about Civil War. Civil War took place; it was it was a multifaceted story taking place on multiple levels, right? So mm -hmm. you had like the guys at the top, you had Captain America versus Iron Man, and then you had Iron Man's Mighty Avengers against Captain America's Secret Avenger, is essentially mm -hmm. what you had. Um, and then you get down below that, and it's like Captain America in a secret ground, so Tony Stark goes to, like, Heroes for Hire, a group that hadn't been relevant in, like, 15 years, and was like, go find Iron Man. Or, I'm sorry, go find Captain America. And they became incredibly relevant. And it was like, dude, this is badass. And then you've got Tigra, who's just like, I quit. I can't, I can't, I'm not going to be part of this. I'm a college kid, right? Like, mm. it was it was showing the superhero community in a variety of different ways, from the very top guys who only ever really do superhero things because it's the only thing they really have to do, all the way down to the bottom people who were just being a superhero because it's the right thing to do and who quit because they don't want to get caught up in it all, right? And then you have a whole bunch of villains who show up to the to the base of operations of the, of the secret Avengers of Captain America and they want to join him because they believe Iron Man's going too far. And in the middle of all that, the Punisher rescues Spider-Man from like Jack O'Lantern over in the sewers of New So Punisher brings Spider-Man to the headquarters of the, of the secret Avengers and he sees the villain and he just sprays him down. Like he just shoots yeah. him because that's what Punisher does. And Captain America freaks out and Captain America attacks the Punisher. And it's like, why did you do that? You know, it's like, because they were bad guys, Cap. Like, and, and it's like, it was, it was these stories on multiple levels. And so imagine that being like a whole 
face. It would have been mind blowing. Well, then what if I if I went to you and I presented you with a situation where I said there's going to be a scenario where the Joker's going to massacre everybody at the Daily Planet, and the Joker's going to be arrested for it, and the Joker's going to be put on trial, and he's going to go through due process. As much as it sucks, and as much as you would love to just see him die, he's going to be put on a trial by a jury of his peers and either be found guilty or innocent. But in the middle of that trial, he's going to be killed by a vigilante superhero who believed that the Joker just needed to die, and humanity's going to celebrate it, and humanity's going to cheer for it, and Superman is going to lose faith in humanity and walk away. And then all humanity's going to be met with is just a whole new, a whole new generation of vigilante superheroes who just destroy and, and crush things and just get in fights with each other all the time and don't really care about people and then like ultimately wonder woman goes back and she grabs superman and superman ends up coming back and then like a giant civil war is waged between like superman and the classic superheroes against like all the the new vigilante captain adam gets ripped in half and blows up blows up like kansas and like like all these things right you get like kingdom come you get the kingdom come story and if that was like one big phase it would be mind-blowing right it would be it'd be absolutely amazing and that's the big travesty about it right because all these different stories that have been done over the years can all be done in a, in a way that makes you different right like you do scott snyder's court of owls and night of owls it'll feel like a series of horror films right mm -hmm. just because of how it's done and then you go into like death of the family and death in the family i'm sorry death of the in the game and it's an epic because it's like joker basically turns the justice league into like you know jokerized versions of themselves and they all go and they attack batman or you get the batman who laughs in like dark knight's metal like there's so many amazing stories that in a lot of ways would blow marvel out of the water if they were put into oh. a movie. but dc can't get it together and i don't know why i don't nobody know knows <laughs> yeah I... nobody understands why Oh, and then now they lo and let's not even get into the comic book situation and what's going on with Doomsday Clock now and Rebirth. Yeah, you guys had yeah, so Doomsday much Clock's taken like three years. It's insane. Yeah, you guys had so much. Like there's just that big light at the end of that tunnel, starting with it, and it yeah. that went away quick. Yeah, it sucks that it's taken like three years, and and that's that's what. Oh, you kind of. Oh, no, no. so that's the thing. Like, like I'm still excited to see. Uh, let me adjust this mic real quick. Pull this thing closer and then people might hear a click but it'll be all good um that's that's the thing man is like i'm i'm still kind of excited to see how doomsday um but i feel like for like most people out there the novelty's worn off and they're just mm -hmm. kind of like whatever like it's a thing that's there and like i guess i'll read it you know but it's but they're just waiting for the trade honestly and and and, and it kind of not to say nothing of like the three jokers because we're still waiting on that for like after like three years and it's like all right what, what's what's going on right now meanwhile while everybody's waiting on doomsday clock to come out jeff johns is writing shazam no one cares so yeah. I, don't, I don't know <laughs> it's weird it's kind of crazy. now yeah. let me ask you this though with yeah. the with the population uh, population yeah they populated <laughs> the popularity of like comic book movies and television series right now you know like disney plus has all their stuff now coming out dc's doing the whole cw thing which became very questionable i think it's still pretty good actually i really enjoy seeing like DC landscape yeah I, but go ahead uh, i stopped i stopped i like i was like can we just agree that arrow season three was awful <laughs> <laughs> like just like that was garbage Hmm. but and then like i stopped after flash season three i'm like okay that's cool whatever I'm, I'm out yeah a lot of people quit with season five i think it is the the more recent one the yeah. last one they just had a lot of people were just like it was bad so i, I don't i don't know but I, I like i said i stopped but like with all this popularity because obviously they gotta be making money or else they wouldn't be making flash season six and arrow season eight and now batwoman yeah what what do you think the future of the comic book industry is like I mean, DC and Marvel are kind of safe because, you know, Marvel's owned by Disney, DC, Warner Brothers. But, like, Image Comics? Questionable? I mean, Image Comics, is, is, Image Comics is sustained. Okay, here's the thing. Image, with the exception of Spawn, never really had the same numbers as Marvel. And right? Like it's, and, and, but that's because it was never really meant to be that way. It was never really meant to be the next Marvel and DC. It was meant to be an outlet for creators to produce content that they solely had control of. Right. And that's the thing, like every comic book in image is its own universe for the most part, from Jonathan Hickman's East of West all the way to like Brian K. I'm sorry, uh, to Jason Aaron's Southern Bastards, you know, down to, to Brian K. Vaughn's uh, was it Why the Last Man? You know, like they're, they're all designed. I think that's published by image, but they're all designed to be their own separate universes. Right. They're not tied into anything. 
I think maybe Spawn and like one other comic have crossed over, and like that was basically. It. Um, honestly, those are predicated based on one, the popularity of the writer, and two, word of mouth is really all you have to spread the popularity of those of those stories. That's why people look at Jonathan Hickman, and I'll and I'll cover like House and you know House and Powers of X, and I'll say if you guys love long form like slow burn stories like this, you're gonna love Jonathan His uh, Jonathan Hickman's East of West because it's basically what if the apocalypse happens and 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 like the four horsemen are supposed to return, but death gets here before everybody else, and all the other horsemen have to find it. Like how does all how does that unfold? You know, how does that story? Yeah, it's it's amazing, you know. And it's like if you read Scott Snyder's Witches, you know, Witches is really is a really cool story where if you sacrifice a person, you get a boon, you get some, you get basically a wish granted more or less, and you get to see how that story unfolds, right? So it's word of mouth that makes those things popular. Uh, for Marvel and DC, the future will only become more, I think, or at the very least, continue on its current trend. Um, in terms of uh, of of you know everybody else ranging from the from valiant entertainment to uh to image comics valiant entertainment is moving into the movie industry by doing bloodshot mm -hmm. and then they'll probably follow that up with like exo man of war and then rye and then you know a, a few other people here here the uh ninjack or ninja k depending on who you, um, what you want to call but uh but but nonetheless you know i think in terms of these movies that that you know valiant's making they're trying to kind of boost their presence beyond simply just comic books uh but for all the smaller publishers out there right because you've got marvel d image they've got like a zillion other small publishers that are out there um I, I don't i don't know i mean honestly is is so long as the writers keep getting work and the writers build up an audience they'll be fine but i mean it's, it's kind of hard to guess right i mean for the for the comic book industry as a whole it's a medium right it's just it's like mm -hmm. you know literary novels and so on and so forth they'll always exist you know it's just a matter of whether or not its popularity waxes and wanes to the point where it's huge or it's small so yeah that's yeah. how I just wanted to hear your opinion on it, seeing as you, oh, know, okay. you kind of got your thumb on the on the pulse. You see what I'm saying? Well, see that's that's the thing. Like like I recently checked out. It doesn't. I didn't really understand why so much put on comic book stores, and a lot of people assumed that to mean that I wanted to shut down comic book stores, and that mm -hmm. wasn't really the case. It wasn't really like we should actively shut them down. It's we should just stop trying to keep them alive, right? Like those who make it continue and those who don't, don't, right? And a lot of people said, well, because it's the community. But the reality is the last time, the last time I went to, I can't remember the last time I went to a comic book store and saw a whole bunch of people talking about Captain America, the newest Captain America comic or something like yeah. that. Whenever I see a bunch of people gathered together at a comic book store, they're playing games, right? Mm -hmm. Now, now, I mean, there's a lot of other places that you could do that. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of like internet cafes that are popping up now more than they have before. Um, so, so, I mean, I get that people want to keep it alive, you know, for that purpose. Uh, and, and people, some people argue, well, you don't actually own it in digital. And there's a lot of different arguments why comic book stores should stay open. Uh, but I think that, that the market will take care of itself. You know, I think that a time will come when you will just see comic book stores go away and digital will take over completely because it's more convenient and it's more practical as opposed mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if, if I'm like, okay, so I need to get caught up on this week's comics, what makes more sense to carry around a single iPad or to carry around a hundred comic book floppies, right? A single iPad makes the most sense. And I, so, I... <laughs> want, oh, I was like, you're going to carry around a hundred floppies? You're going to... I've done I mean, it all depends on it, if you want to go to the gym tomorrow or not, right? <laughs> yeah. I've I've done that dance, right? Like, and that's a, and and it's just like it, there was a time when it was cool, but like for me, it's it's more about the the kind of a content. It's not really like I don't really care about the medium by which mm -hmm. I get it. Right? It doesn't really matter to me if I'm reading a physical comic book or if I'm reading a digital, you know, you know looking at a tablet and reading it. What I care about is the story. I don't really care about how I get it, you know, and so. Uh, so because of that, you know, it's it's, it's interesting. But in, in terms of the overall comic book escape, I don't think you're going to see, I don't think you're going to see it end anytime soon. Um, certainly not in the next like 20 to 25 years. I think you might see it shift in terms of how you get your comics, you know, physical, digital, so on and so forth. But uh, in terms of it like going away or being negatively impacted, I don't really see that happening. I think it's going to be interesting, especially now that like we lost, not Chris Evans, uh, yeah, Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr., you know, the big, uh, a lot of the big hitters from the MCU are now gone, you know, yeah. and uh, the guy who plays Thor, he's he's definitely leaving in the next five years, I bet. So, like, Chris Hemsworth, I'm, yeah, yeah, Chris Hemsworth. It's going to be interesting to see what happens because, like, arguably, the comic book industry has gotten a big boom from the MCU being as popular as it is. Marvel and, has, certainly, yes, yeah. yeah, and it's only and it makes like. I don't know. In my opinion, I think DC, if DC can scoop up the ball now and like, you know, get things going with their new Batman and hopefully and uh, hopefully a decent Superman and maybe a Nightwing. I don't know. 
I don't think, even think that movie is still in development. But like, if if they can scoop up the ball and keep it going, we might see a different uh, comic book, you know, market in the next ten years. But if they don't, I think I think I'm really worried that there's going to be another crash. And that's just me looking at it from like, okay, here's this big boom. What's going to happen with the MCU? You know, well, in DC. The one thing to keep in mind is the reason why the big crash happened in the '90s is because it was just an saturation of comics, mm-hmm. right? Like everybody was buying comics because they thought it was going to be they were going to be worth a lot of money. Um, and then when people started realizing that like a ton of copies of that comic they bought were being produced and their comics would be worth less money, people stopped buying them, right? So the comic book market crashed in the 90s because of the, because of, uh, of consumers, because of mm-hmm. people buying comic books and because of comic book fans. Um, but again, I, I think that in terms of it, of it crashing, I don't think it'll crash like it did before. I think that what you'll, you'll see, if anything, is comic books going back to where they were. Uh, in terms of popularity, essentially between like the late 1990s and the early 2000s, before mm-hmm. the launch of of um, of uh, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because the the launch of Spider Man boosted a lot of Spider Man comics, and the launch of the X Men boosted X Men comics. That's true, but in terms of the entire comic book landscape rising up the way that it has now in popularity, I think that's largely due to the MCU. Now, as far as Warner Brothers goes with the movies they're making, I wouldn't try to copy the MCU. I mean, I would to a degree, insofar as as like the phase formula, different things like that. I would make movies about villains. That's what I would do. I would focus on bad guys, right? Because we know from the Joker movie they can do it. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, I haven't seen Nick it yet. Movies. Oh, you haven't seen it yet? I have not seen Dude. Joker. I would say the Joker's probably Oscar worthy. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's I keep, fantastic. I keep hearing that, but when I went there with my sister, we went to go see Zombie Land Two instead. Oh, <laughs> was that any good? It was okay. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen it yet, so I, I don't know. I went. I went to go get popcorn midway through, and I slid into the Joker. I was like, "Why didn't I go see you?" <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel like with Zombie Land, catch lightning in a bottle again. But I, I still wouldn't. I still think it'd yeah. be cool to see. So yeah, I think I, honestly, I think that they should have brought it back as like maybe like a five episode miniseries, you know, and then be yeah. done with it. I think it, yeah. I think this whole idea of a sequel ten years later is just too it's too long. Yeah, it's, it's, it just took too long. But but anyways, Rob, I think I feel like we're getting close to running out of time here. You gotta okay. set in about an hour, so. What I'd like to do in this last one, with this last tangent, I don't know how long it's going to go, but like, why? Uh, let's talk about Superman because me and you, we both like Superman. Yeah, I love and Superman, we, and we kind of touched on it. But why do you, like? Why do you think Batman gets so much attention? Do you think it's just because it's easier to understand Batman at a first glance than it is Superman, or do you think like because he's relatable and he's the underdog? Like technically, Batman should never be successful, right? Like, and that's the thing: people give me crap all the time. Because- Batman loves Superman because I'm a comic book fan, guys. I'm just like you. I'm biased about my characters, right? Like mm-hmm. I ignore the things that 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 don't make any sense with my character, and I focus on the things that do. Right? I mean, it's just the nature of us as comic book fans. Logic and reason has nothing to do with it, right? So, um, for for me, Batman is he's the underdog, right? Like he's just a normal man, right? So if Superman decided one day he wanted to kill Batman, he could do it in a variety of ways, right? Like like Mr. Sunday Movies had this amazing video where he was like all the ways that Superman can kill Batman. And it was basically do this and then kick his head off, right? Like kick his head off and then throw him into the sun, you know, punch him through the stomach and then kick his head off. You know, like, it's like, just, it's like, it was almost kind of, it was almost kind of uh, funny, right? Because Batman fans love to kind of make this argument. It's like, well, it's Batman. It's like, yeah, but like, he's a regular man. All Superman has to do is walk up to Bruce and say, Bruce, you having a good day? And he's like, yeah, man, it's an awesome day, buddy. It's like, well, that's cool, Bruce. And then Batman or Superman grabs him and throws him into the sun from planet earth. And that's the end of Batman. Or like flies him out to Jupiter and drops him off in the middle of this giant gas giant where he just basically bounces back and forth until he lands in the medium or in the middle and then he's crushed by the by the pressure within Jupiter itself, right? I mean, like he can just take him out to Pluto and drop him off there at the very edge of the solar system where he'll freeze on what's essentially like a small little planetoid slash giant chunk of ice. Like there's mm-hmm. a zillion ways, you know? But somehow Batman always ends up winning. And people like that. People like to see the underdogs uh, underdog succeed. You know, I think that, that right now it's it's gotten to the point where it's like Batman always succeeds, mm-hmm. uh, which is kind of like he's really not much of an underdog if you always expect him to win. Uh, but but still, you know, it's it's interesting. You know, I, I think that's why. It's because, you know, when you when under the, the Batman cloak and cowl, it could be anybody. It's a Superman, or I'm sorry, the Spider-Man effect, right? Like under the Spider-Man mask could be anybody. It could be you or it could be anybody that you know. Uh, with Batman, it's the same way, right? It could be anybody under there. And so so people can kind of put themselves in the place of Bruce Wayne and then kind of go forward from there. 
So, but be but trying to put yourself in the shoes of this man that can lift you know buildings over his head and all that is kind of yeah. hard. Is what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, people can't really identify with a guy who is the sole survivor of a super advanced technological plan, somehow unable to realize that it's getting ready to explode, and uh, who who was basically whisked away to another world by his parents. Right? I mean, it is it is it's relatable insofar as it's the immigrant story. But mm-hmm. unless you're an immigrant, you can't relate to it, right? So I mean, so it, it doesn't it doesn't really doesn't really. And even even only the the destruction of Krypton and the you know jettisoning away of the ship to Earth uh, is the relatable part. Like once he gets here, he's a guy that's basically a god among men, and he can do anything, right? So I mean, he's got astronomical strength. He's got like almost every power known to man, shy of reality warping, and like energy projection. And even then, you can make that argument based on heat vision. So you're talking about a super powerful character. Uh, people can't really relate to that, right? Like, what about Superman is relatable? Like, there's I, there's really nothing there. So. I relate to him because he's from the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's yeah, I guess <laughs> I guess that you know. But I like Superman because Superman, right? Like Superman does not represent humanity for what it is. He represents humanity for what it could be, you know, mm-hmm. becoming something better. And that's that's one of the reasons why I like why I love the character Superman so much. Plus, he's the original superhero. He's the one that set all of this in motion. So <laughs> mm-hmm. it's kind of amazing to see what two kids from what was it? Uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, what they were able to do. It's it's, it's mm-hmm. cool. Like I think Superman gets a lot of shit that he it, he doesn't deserve. Because Superman, I you can tell now. What what's your opinion on this? Because my argument is you can't you can't you can have a physical threat against Superman in his story. You know. A, the better Superman stories are the ones that challenge him by his ideology. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like yeah, that I agree with. Um, stories that challenge his strength are not very interesting. Tor- stories that challenge his character are what are fascinating, right? That's why Injustice was so cool because it's mm-hmm. not a matter of Superman becoming a Yellow Lantern. That stuff was cool. It was cool mm-hmm. to see him become part of the Sinestro Corps, things like that. But it's like, what happens when everything Superman knows and loves dies? And it dies because of himself, because he, whether he was tricked into it or did it willingly, because it, in Injustice, like he ended up killing Lois Lane and their unborn child, albeit he was tricked into doing it. But it's like, you know, what would what would that like what would happen? And to watch a character like that break and become the most the, the worst, the most violent version of himself is amazing. Mm-hmm. Like it's 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 incredible to see uh, stories like that are what makes Superman cool. Stories like Kingdom Come where Superman loses faith in humanity. And it's just like, oh, I'm sorry, but humanity is just not worth it anymore. And he walks away. Stories like that are awesome. They're fantastic. You know, that's what I really, really dig. So, yeah, like, I think, I think that's, and that's what DC should focus on when they make a uh, movie. I think it should be like a challenging of ideologies, not just, you know, let's, let's not make Superman challenge like, oh, he's going to face Metallo. Let's, let's have like Lex have a different thing of opinions and be like, hey, yeah. I'm Lex Luthor, so I put my opinion on display in Metropolis. You know, yeah. and now, yeah, basically. now Superman, Superman comes here. He's like, no, I'm gonna show you what I can do. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't know. That's that's why Lex is such a great villain for Superman is because Lex is not physical strength, right? And he mm-hmm. can't go toe to toe with Superman in a fight unless he's wearing his battle armor. What makes Lex such a cool villain is he can challenge Superman mentally, right? He can mm-hmm. outthink him. And that's what makes him such a great villain. You know, the fact that he's a, uh, it's brain versus brawn. That, that's mm-hmm. what, and it's always been that way. Ever since Lex Luthor first showed up in like Superman number four, I think it was back in whenever it was, you know, 1938, 1939. Uh, it was, it was cool. Like it, it's, oh. it's been, you see that. So. Yeah. Cause again, like, you need that. Cause it's brain versus brawn, you know, easy tropes and stuff, but they can, I, I feel like you can do that in a lot of different ways. And I'm excited. I really hope I want a Superman movie. Cause let's, what was your opinion on Henry Cavill? I thought Henry Cavill was a great Superman. I just think the script was bad. Oh, like yeah. the Justice League when he's just like, you know, making that face, you know, and like they're they're just like, just like everybody look at how capable we are with like like hiding his mustache. And it's like, what is even the point of all that? You know, like, um, I mean, it's it's Henry Cavill. I think is a great actor, especially mm-hmm. if you've seen movies like The Man from Uncle or like uh, Mission Impossible. What is it? Ghost Protocol, whichever whichever one was the the more recent one that Henry Cavill. It's on Hulu. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's a he's an amazing actor. Uh, the issue is that like any actor out there, like he was operating off a terrible script, and yeah. the the script for Justice League, for Batman versus Superman, they were all just bad. 
And so it's it's the result is that people look at Henry Cavill and they say he was a crappy Superman. They look at Man of Steel and they say he was a crappy Superman because of that. But again, it was a script. It wasn't really Henry Cavill. Get Henry Cavill to play Superman in, in, a, in a fantastically written movie and it'll blow you away, I think, how capable he is. So Yeah. Well, Rob, I feel like that's a good way to end it off. Seeing as it, yeah, man. we're hitting our five hour or five hour limit, our like hour limit. Hour. <laughs> man, this time flew by. Uh, <laughs> the power of good conversation. Anyways, yeah, guys, if you like what we try to do here, check uh, check me out over at No Penny Gaming. Uh, I got a kind of a couple secret projects. I'm uh, hopefully coming out soon. Rob, as always, comics explained right. Uh, I am yeah, Rob man. Jefferson. Your vo- yeah. your my your personal name. Instagram at I am Rob Jefferson. I live stream with you guys. Um, and, and I usually put a countdown timer there so you guys know what the live stream is going to be, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I love that. I'd love interacting with talking. To you, so, well, thank you for coming on. This was, this, yeah. this was great. We'll, we'll have to do this again. Maybe sometime. Yeah, man. Thanks for inviting me, dude. This is awesome. Oh, oh no problem at all. It, it was fun. <laughs> next time we'll get to, uh, next time we'll talk about video games. I swear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm done with that, man. Talk about uncharted the whole time. <laughs> oh, those games are so great. Uh, Anyways, yeah, guys. Yeah. I'll see you guys again next time, and have a nice day. Bye. You can say bye, too. (laughs) Peace.